right. I think I'm live. I don't actually have my phone near me to check. Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm live. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. It is the 5th of May, 2021. It's just cruising along, which is crazy. Um, here in my world, we are getting close to the end of the school year. And then we're going to jump into summer, which is always a really busy time because, you know, when the kids are home, we do stuff all summer. So that's exciting. Um, I also have, what, about a week, two weeks, a little, a week and a half, a week and a half until the live class starts for um, the next course, for the Family Train Epics course. And I've got quite a few people signed up. Um, and that's exciting. We're getting kind of close to um, the class cap. And then on the 17th of May, we are going to start and learn together for two weeks. And when I did it with the beta course, I had a lot of fun. So I'm excited about that. Um, a little business. I've had some people emailing me because I had mentioned that I was going to do something for Mother's Day. And it's funny because more than one of you have emailed me just to be like, hey, have you have you noticed that Mother's Day is this Sunday? And yes, I have noticed. Um Although I feel like when Mother's Day is early like this, it's very easy to completely forget about it. So I appreciate the heads up. Uh, the Mother's Day event that I'm doing starts on Friday, and I'll be talking about that on Friday. And it goes Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It is not a coupon code. Um, it is not a discount per se. So if you're thinking, well, you know, I wanted to buy five deluxe bundles, but I'm going to wait and see if she offers, you know, 20% off or something. I'm not doing that. It's not like that. Um, but I do, I think you'll be excited. We're just not going to talk about it until Friday because I like to, I don't know, <laughs> create anticipation unnecessarily, I guess. All right. So what are we going to do today? Today, we're going to create an ancestor profile page. And uh, by create an ancestor profile page, I mean, we're going to fill it out. We're not actually going to create the page. I already created the page and you can buy it from me. Or if you sign up for my email list, it's one of the pages that you can get for free as a sample. Um, so let's do this. All right. That was just so you guys know what we were talking about. Looks like I'm live. Let's continue to be live. Let's cross our fingers. Okay. So I pulled up this person on... Um, family search could be my relationship. I have no idea if I'm actually related to this person. I don't think I am. Um, I was just looking for somebody who had a lot of information. So I'm going to show you how to, you know, take information like this out of a family search. Uh, no reason to move that over out of a family search profile or some other, you know, if you had ancestry profile, if you have your information just saved to your computer and to actually put it into the um, ancestor profile page. I'm going to be using GoodNotes 5. I have this notebook here um, that I actually I used before when I was showing you guys uh, how to fill in fan charts or how to use different things uh, on Family Search to do fan charts. Um, and that is in a previous video if you're curious. And we're going to create an ancestor profile page here. So on GoodNotes 5, when you want to add another page, you come down to the end of your pages and you click this little plus sign. This is going to ask you where you want to add the page from. Now, I have a separate video that talks about adding my pages to GoodNotes as templates so that you can just pull them. Um, I actually, so if I had uploaded this and had these genealogy pages available in templates, I could just go to more from templates and it's going to pull up all the templates I've created. Now, as you can see, I don't actually use my computer to create genealogy pages. Um, I can't make that any bigger, apparently. I use it for planner pages and for other things that are related to my business, but I do all of my genealogy pages on my iPad. So I have not taken the time to upload any of my pages as templates on this computer. Um, when I do make pages for samples and things like that, I actually just import directly from the computer. So this is another option. If you didn't want to do templates, when you click this little plus sign, um, import is an option. So I'm going to click import. I have moved the page uh, right here that I want to use. Sand Ancestor. I'm going to do the right-handed page first. Uh, I'm going to open it and it's going to import that page. And now that page is available for me to fill it in annoyingly with this other page right on top. All right. How do we view 
Stop it. Show sidebar. Hide sidebar. Okay, well, that made it marginally bigger, but... Huh. That is going to drive me crazy. Nope. All right. Stop it. Show sidebar. I'm just going to... This is going to seem so ridiculously... Um picky, but I'm actually adding another one because having that fan chart was really bugging me. Okay. Um, so here we have the, uh, the hiding that the page and I need to get this information onto this page. So let's say that this is my great grandmother or this is the great grandmother of the root person. Cause normally there is going to be a relationship to the root person. Uh, if you aren't just picking random people off a of family search to do examples, so here I'm going to put maternal great grandmother. Um, this area I like to leave clear for photos. Here I'm going to put names. So Sarah Mahala Vance. I am not getting really picky with lining things up because I always do that at the end. Um, 15 March 1875. I know that that is one of the drawbacks of um, I'm gonna move this over a little bit of using good notes is that it doesn't automatically just click to place and line everything up nicely. I appreciate that but I also think that good notes gives me a lot of creative freedom in other ways so it doesn't bother me too much because I just go through at the end and line everything up. So I'm just transcribing this information off of the family search profile. Of course, if this was the first time that I was encountering this ancestor, I would want to go through and make sure that this information was correct. But I'm actually always fine doing a transcription first and then going back and fixing things rather than doing the research and adding each thing one at a time as I confirm it. But that's completely, you know, up to you, depending on how you want to do it. Um, we're going to scoot this over a little bit so I can see her parents. Okay, I like to do there's no, you know, under father and mother, there's no additional fields for more information. Part of that was because it leaves lots of space for the name. And then part of that was because everybody, you know, kind of has their own style. I like to do the um, parents' names and then the year that they were born. And then we're going to do Hannah Richardson, born in 1855. And again, this is all information that I am going to, or I would have to um, confirm later with actual sources so that I'm not just taking family searches word for it, but this is a good starting place. Okay, so she was married to Valentine Brigham Young. And uh, I do uh, marriage dates for the spouses, not birth dates. And it says that they were married in 29th July, 1895. And then the children, okay, so she had two different marriages. So I'm actually going to add a comma and include Roderick Du Mackenzie and married uh, 1903. Ooh, which didn't quite fit. I think I'm going to do that. Okay, and then the children, we have... Baby Young, born, uh, died, 1895. Uh, Ruth Young, born, 1896. Emerald Young, that's a pretty name, born, 1899. There was not enough space there. I'm going to make that its own new line. Uh, and then... Let's see, are there any children from this marriage that were? So sometimes I add, I put these on a separate line. Most of the time I just include them with the last name, which indicates that they came from a different um, union. Born 1907, Roderick Vance. Mackenzie is going to fit, yes, okay. Born 1912, John Reynolds McKenzie, um, born 1914, and Sarah June McKenzie, 
born in 1918. Okay, so that's all the children, and we're going to say that her index number is uh, 12, because I can't remember off the top of my head which index number goes with the maternal great-grandmother. Um, again, you don't make this up unless you're filling in the blank index. You would find the relationship and put her in the right place in the index. This is just because that's not the important part of what I wanted to do here. Okay, so I could add notes if I had things that I wanted to share. Um, at this point, I want to add photos though. So let's find photos. I can see that they have photos. So I'm gonna go into memories. Uh, okay, that's, no, what is going on? These need to not be all squished together like that. <laughs> Don't, there we go. That was weird. Um, okay, so that's not a bad photo. It's a little, the detail on it's not great. It's not a very good scan. Um, this is better. Okay, so I'm going to download this image. Actions. Download. And then I'm also, I want to see if I can get one of her when she's older. Uh, so this is her over here. So I'm going to download that one as well. And you can see those both downloaded here. I'm going to drag this on. You can either drag or you can use the little image button up here. I'm going to click on that, hit crop. We're going to crop it down as handsome as this other man is. I really only wanted her picture. And I'll get her glove. That's the thing. I like to have large pictures, but sometimes when the quality is not great, I will zoom out a little bit just because then the fuzziness kind of goes away. Um, and then I want to do this one as well. And we will crop that down. Uh, it's always good when you're cropping and there's other people in the photo. Don't include their eyes. It's a weird thing, but including other people's eyes pulls your attention. Um, much more so than any other part of their body. So I'm always really careful. Like it'd be really nice to do this, but having that other woman's eye in the photo would be really distracting. Done. Whereas here, it's really easy to ignore somebody else's hairline, you know. Um, I do wish the Good Notes had an automatic thing to just snap things to the same size as the photo that you've put in, but it doesn't. Um, so you have to be kind of finicky about it. I have all that. That's uh, not perfect, but I guess we'll live with it because it's a sample. I would be playing with that a lot. All right. So now I'm, I'm up here and I'm using this lasso tool. I use the lasso tool to straighten everything out once I've added all the information. So I've selected the lasso tool. Okay. And first I'm going to straighten these and put them in the center. It would have been fine if I left them over to the side, but uh, it really bugs me that this is the wrong size. I'm clicking image and I'm cropping this a little bit because I'm crazy. Okay, that makes me feel better. So yeah, I lassoed these and I'm putting them where I want them. I'm gonna lasso this and just straighten it out a little bit. This is again, it's finicky and a little annoying, but I'm so in the habit of doing this. I even do this with my handwriting. Um, although with handwriting, you have to be careful because you have to, uh, you know, here I can just grab part of the text. Like I can just grab this L and the whole thing's going to move with it. With your handwriting, um, GoodNotes sees all of those things as individual units or whatever, pieces of data. So you have to grab all of your handwriting to get it to move together. Um, but yeah, I straighten my handwriting and things like that all the time. And then here, I have to make a decision. Do I want to put this here where it's a little bit close? to the spouses or do I want to put this down here? Um, I think I'm fine with it being close to the spouses and I'm just going to center this index number. And then we have this completed ancestor profile because I didn't choose to do any notes. And again, I could come in here and update this later and then print another one out. But um, we have finished this page and I really quickly just wanted to show you if I wanted, if I had done this page and now all of a sudden I thought, oh, you know what? I want to make a double-sided book and I didn't want it to be on a right-hand page. I wanted it to be on a left-hand page. Um, I'm going to add another page and this time I'm going to import the left-hand ancestor profile page. 
um, it's the same page, it's just reversed so that the binding is going to go here instead of over here. And I'm going to use that lasso tool to really easily grab everything. And I'm hitting control on my keyboard and it's going to let me copy. And then I'm just going to come down here and paste. And it's very easy to move this so that everything's in the right spot because the middle part of the page is the same. The only thing that you're going to run into, let me get this just right, okay, is see right here, this goes over onto the binding. So you're going to have to, that's because this tucked under where it said Ancestor Profile and it looked fine on the other page. But I'm going to come up to text and actually, um, you know, move this so that it doesn't run onto the binding. Okay, stop that. To the binding color strip. And then I also need to grab my lasso tool and grab the index number, which is now in the wrong place. And then here you can see, now I'm be ready to print this out or save it to my notebook or whatever and have it be on the um, left side of the book. Or, you know, I've got this one on the right side of the book. So I hope that this was helpful. Again, very simple. I just wanted to show you what the actual process was in case you're still on the fence and you haven't done this before. Um, I really like the way that these look when they're finished. And I could see, you know, it would be easy to sit here at the computer and make um, books like this, doing text and everything. I just, I like to have all of my pages match. So before I start a book, I have to decide, you know, do I want all of these pages to be typed or do I want them all to be in my handwriting? And so far for all of my personal work, I have just wanted to have things be in my handwriting. Anyway, okay, I'll be back on Friday and I will be talking about the Mother's Day Family Tree Notebook event. Let me check for comments. Hi, good morning. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you guys on Friday.